regular meeting at 7 p.m. January 16, 2018. Mr. Collier. Mr. Garner. Mayor Reynolds. Here. Mr. Lighty. Here. Mr. Lowry. Here. Mr. Cobb. Here. Mr. Cook. Yes. Mr. Lindsay. Here. All present. All right. Uh, we're going to go to the invocation brought to you by uh, Pastor Andrew Wright. Diego, thank you for the day. See, just a few months ago, we were complaining about it. I know, I'm complaining about the cold. We can either do that or we can just enjoy it. So then God help us to enjoy every day. That we help us to enjoy all the people we meet and all the experiences we have. Bless to you, God. Thanks for this uh, town, for these uh, wonderful people that we live with. Bless us and our town immensely, for we ask it in your name. Amen. Amen. $1,917,561.69. Year-to-date revenue is $6,886,937.72. And the year-to-date expenditures are $6,169,298.99. And I want to go into a little bit of detail. I put a special note for everyone who's reading the report with me. 
on uh, December 4th, the ordinance 17-46 was approved by council that increased our estimated revenues by $1,294,311.06. That total is in those December revenue and the year to date. That was for the refinance of our bonds, that uh, the general bond and the Twin Creeks bond. And again, the um, ordinance 1747 increased the appropriation to allow us to refinance it. So that is a financial um, balanced amount going in and out. So if I take those numbers out to make it a little bit more realistic for actual revenue for December, we brought in $403,878 and expenditures were $623,250. On the second page, we have another, um, some um, reconciliations of the checkbook I'm going to start putting in my financial report. It has the bank balances of $3,074,490.79. And then I also have the income tax collections by month with the CCA, the company we contracted with, and what we get with the state of Ohio. So the total for the year of our income tax that was receded into the general fund is nine hundred fifty seven thousand four hundred fifty seven dollars and thirty cents and then to the police half percent levy we receded in four hundred sixty five thousand five hundred thirty six dollars and thirty seven cents the total cost for the 2017 collections fee by CCA was $26,828.50. That's less than 2% of what we collected was their fees. The second half of the report you'll be getting monthly is our statement of cash report, and that is a balance sheet. It's basically the actual cash of every fund for the city, and that'll change every month. The second, then third page is our revenue and expense report that I always include, and then a list of the accounts payable checks. If there's anything, any questions I can entertain, I'd be happy to. Council, any questions? Mm -hmm. Mr. Lowry. Ms. Harris, if you wouldn't mind on your report uh, on uh, fund number 101, which is the general fund, the ending balance there, would you mind going over that number for me? On the cash statement? Yes, please. Sure. Our beginning balance in the general fund when we started the first of the year 2017 was $524,932.36. We brought in year to date $1,308,219. And our expenditures year to date was one million thirty three thousand four hundred thirty nine dollars and thirteen cents. We have outstanding encumbrance of six hundred ninety nine dollars and sixty one cents. That is an outstanding obligation that will be paid this year. And so our ending balance in the general fund is eight hundred twenty nine thousand twelve dollars and sixty two cents, which is very, very nice. $800,000 in what, two years? We were setting it a couple thousand over. We were close to fiscal watch in 14, 2014. We recovered, but it is absolutely with the help of that income tax. Most definitely. And um, just everything else we tried to save and put in. So the city's in a very good financial situation compared to 2014. We we're doing very well. Thank you very, very much. You're welcome. Council, anything else? Thank you, Ms. Uh, Harris. I'm moving on with the city manager report, our uh, service discussion with Mr. Howard Kiko, our service director. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Good evening, Mayor, Council, members of the public. Uh, just a few items that I'd like to talk about under service departments. Uh, leaf collection is complete, and uh, treat work will be scheduled as weather permits, and the weather is not cooperating at all for us to try to you know, stay ahead of schedule um, with that work. Um, I want to jump down real quick, Scarf Road Water Tower be legislation in front of council. Um, I think at this meeting and pass, hopefully pass uh, to proceed with the SCARP uh, Tower project. And then on, I added a, a line item just for, I know I had snow removal before, but this is an update that I wanted to cover. Approximate usage to date, uh, we've used about 75 tons. Um, 50 tons is from the last winter's uh, unused salt. And so far we've used 25 tons of this year's budgeted salt. We are having an additional 75 tons delivered. Uh, I just found out it's going to be tomorrow. And we bid about 300 tons per year. Next bullet point is that our average
for salting, which less than two inches, so it's anywhere from a dusting to two, where we can usually uh, burn the so snow off the roads without uh, plowing. For our main thoroughfares and intersections, using about four and a half tons, and that's just an average of salt, which costs about $227, and that is just for the actual tonnage of salt. Uh, no labor included in that. The storm for 112 through 113, uh, we used approximately 12 tons of salt, cost about $606, and that was all streets were salted. And then the storm that we're just finishing up today, and we'll do a little more cleaning in the morning, is 115, 116 storm. We used approximately 14 tons of salt, and that uh, comes out to be about $707, and that is all streets salted. Um, I rode around with one of the plow drivers today in one of the quadrants to uh, see how things were going, and yes, uh, we had put down salt on every every road that we got. Um, traffic, uh, just want another bullet point. Traffic is our number one contributor to how effective that salt is outside of having the temperatures go above freezing the ne next day when we had the salt down. And then uh, last one is uh, discussion and questions with uh, the whole report or the snow removal um, update. Council, any questions? Mr. Reynolds. Mr. Reynolds. Mr. Kicko, so when you say uh, traffic is the number one contributor to salt effectiveness, meaning, I'm assuming, as the traffic drives over, it's crushing it down into the snow, getting it down in there to do its job, correct? Uh, it's crushing the salt, it's carrying, it's moving the brine around. Um, if you look at 571, 235, which handles just about 10,000 cars a day, it gets the same amount of salt per cubic foot or per square foot that any other street gets. It's just that much more traffic, that much more heat. Um, and that's why the back roads don't look like they've been salted because the traffic's less. Right. I mean, that's a, that's a big factor. As a matter of fact, we went back through the old section today was the first part that was uh, completely salted right after lunchtime. So we're about 12.30. And in two hours, we started seeing some breakthrough, but not like you would see on any other road with that salt that was put down. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Kiko. Moving on with the city manager's report under our fire discussion, our fire chief, Chief Krusty, Mayor, Councilman, General Public. For the month of December, the New Carlisle Fire Division responded to 68 EMS calls in the city, 20 in Elizabeth Township. The division responded to three fire-related calls in the city and zero in Elizabeth Township. We had three EMS calls answered by Pike Township or Bethel Park due to medic 52 being on response. Uh, we answered two mutual aid calls for Pike Township and two for Bethel Park. In the month of December, the division responded to one overdose call. For the year of 2017, the division responded to 972 EMS calls, 247 fire-related calls for a total of 1,219. In Elizabeth Township, they responded to 122 EMS calls and 33 fire-related calls for a total of 155 for the year. Any questions? Chief, that's definitely impressive, you know, over 1,300 calls in a year from our department. So keep doing what you're doing. You're a fantastic asset for our city. Thank you. I'm up. You're up. Apologize for being late. Sarge, how are you doing? Sarge. Do you have reports? Yes, I do. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, may I proceed? Sorry, can we proceed? Yes. Okay. And moving on with the city manager's report, our police discussion with our police administrator, Sergeant Underwood. I'll wait just a few minutes or a minute or so here so you can get your copy of the report. Uh, and uh, I come from the other side of Springfield tonight. Roads aren't that terrible. I mean, there's still icy spots. So if you're going to leave the city, plan a little extra time. Looks like we're just about done here. Uh, for the month of December, the new crowd deputies were dispatched to 26 calls, which is light. Uh, there's a lot of factors involved in there. Deputies take uh, some time off like everyone else during the holidays. And uh, that doesn't mean that's all the calls we have. That just means that our four deputies in New Carlisle, that's what they handled. 
the road division handled other calls too. So with that, we had one assault, domestic violence, we had seven, theft, we had three. Uh, Non-injury crash, we took one. Injury crash, we had none. Citations, we had 13. Drug complaint, one. And suicide attempts, we had four. Uh, if you'll note that our domestic violence are up, they're almost double what they normally are, and our suicide attempts uh, are up just about double what they normally are. And uh, the only factor I could come up with that is because of the holiday season. Uh, sometimes it is a depressing time for a lot of people. And in, in December and early January, we had some home burglaries in the city. At least suspects have been identified, and as I was typing this, the deputies are looking for them. Um, actually, they showed me a, a picture of, of two of the subjects that they're out looking for, and it's just a matter of time that we pick them up. Um, and then, of course, they'll be taken down and interviewed, and hopefully charges will be filed. This could lead in solving some of the car thefts we had, uh, we recently had. That was back in November, so we're hoping this clears up some of those cases. And just remember, please contact the Clark County Sheriff's Office at 937-328-2560 if you witness anything suspicious. Uh, this could be the phone call we need to solve a crime before it reaches you. Um, and uh, please do that. A lot of people don't want to get involved. Um, sometimes you get involved and, and you don't like to be if you're the victim. Uh, this year one of our goals is to get all of our deputies trained for bicycle patrol. This training will be at no cost to the city and will provide another technique for fighting crime. Um, they'll be out on the bikes at night. Uh, our two guys now are doing a lot of business checks at night uh, on a night shift. Uh, and. So we would have two we need to send for that. And also all through the year, the new Carlisle deputies will be attending state mandated trainings. And we have quite a few of those coming up and we'll have the opportunity to attend specialized training of their choice at no cost to new Carlisle. Uh, Deputy Gonzalez, one of the trainings that we're gonna be sending him to because of his request is uh, oversized loads on semis. And, and so we're going to start looking at more tractor trailer semi uh, vehicles as they're coming in the city. Uh, it's a specialized field. Uh, once we get into it, it could, uh, you know, we could stop some trucks coming in here that are overloaded, uh, that are using the Jake brakes, causing so much noise and that sort of thing. So with that, I'm done with my report. If there's anything that uh, I could uh, entertain you with, let me know, please. Council. Thank you, thank you, Sergeant Underwood. Thank Moving you. on with the city manager's report. Um, part in the packet, we have some new credit card payment policies starting to come into effect. The last day to pay by credit card over the phone to the city building for any of your bills is 1-19-2018. So that is uh, this Friday. Um, and then online utility payments. We now have a hard date, unless something changes, of February 5th. Um, it says in the packets that payments will not be taken over the phone if utility payments are operational. Unfortunately, that deadline still has to stick. Um, so if you do right now pay by phone, you will have to come visit us at the city building. Um, but starting right now on 2-5, uh, you will be able to pay your utility water bill online. And we are working with the company and you will be notified more than likely through postcards through to mail to your house. Um, but we are very excited to offer online bill paying. It is something that we get asked about quite frequently. And it's probably been one of the top three requests that I've had since I became city manager. Up there with streets and, 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 and increasing ground productivity. So again, 2-5 is now the hard date for online utility payments, and we are very excited to offer that to the citizens of New Carlisle. Um, we have an intergovernmental meeting set for Monday, January 29th. Council members, it's at Tecumseh High School. Um, so please come if you can come. I will attend this one. Usually I don't go to those because it's more for council, but for the first one with the new council members, I'll go if that's okay. Um, moving on, budget work sessions. I am proposing a budget work session on Thursday, February 1st. Um, 
after the special meeting of council. We'll already be here. The council's already the shelter house is already booked for council. So if we have maybe a few extra hours to step around after that appointment of the new council member, that would definitely be um, great. And also, I would like to have a work session the week of February 5th, and also the week of February 12th. Um, the first read for the budget will be intro on February 20th of 18 of this year. So we don't have too much time, but I think three or four budget work sessions we should be able to knock something out. Can I go ahead and, and pencil in for the first since we're already here? Council, do you want to go? Yep. Okay. And then how about the week of February 5th? It's, it's not a council. Uh, we have a council meeting on that Monday, which is the 5th. Um, so we can have the 6th, 7th, 8th. I don't like to do these on Friday night, but if that's the only time we can do it, then we'll have to do it on Friday night. Um, but it's really up to council's availability. Oh, okay. Give it the 5th, yeah. Any days from Well, 5th, we have a normal council meeting. So okay. Can, I mean, we can yeah, stick around after the council meeting if you guys want to get it done. And just knock it all down in one night. It's not one night. It's fine with me. I'm actually okay with that. You right. want to do that? Because yeah. that'll give me the rest of the week to get things done before we meet again. Sounds good. Fantastic. Um, it'll be after the council meeting. So, oh, the first one. Um, the special meeting starts at 7. So I'm assuming it'll probably start around 7.30ish. 7.45. We'll have to put a date in. We'll just say 7.30. Okay. You said the week of, week of 212. Um, we don't have a council meeting that week, so it can definitely, can definitely um, would be beneficial to meet on that week. I would propose maybe some more earlier in the week, just in case if we do need to do any finalize, we'll have a few days later in the week to maybe catch up. So just want to do it on the 12th then? Want to do it on yes. a Monday? That's fine. Yes. 7 p.m.? Sounds good too. Yes. Okay. Sure. And we'll schedule that in attendance will be now, and I will double check the shelter house availability. If it is booked on the 12th, we can just simply move it to the fire station. All right. Okay. Um, thank you for those. Those are open to the public, so we definitely hire, highly encourage any citizens who want to come and learn about the budget process to please come and sit in with those budget work sessions with us. One more item to discuss. Ohio Municipal League, they're offering training for newly elected council members um, or council members that maybe are not newly elected but just want a little more experience. Um, information is attached with your council packets. I highly recommend definitely the new council members go, but if any other council members would like to attend this, please let me know. We are a member of the Ohio Municipal League, so we will get that heavily discounted rate. I think it's around $69, $65. Um, is it just one day? It is one day. Saturday, and they have three different options. They have a Saturday, 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 February 24th, March 3rd, or March 24th. So, Council, please look over that. Let me know if any of these dates you want to go to. I actually might try to go to one of these two um, if I am allowed because I'm not elected, but I think it's definitely a learning experience. Um, and I will let you know if I'm allowed which one I will go to. I do believe that's all I have for the city manager's report, so I'd be happy to entertain any questions or comments. Council? Thank you. Hey, thank you. Could, could I recommend that if council agrees with he's allowed to go, that you probably be Is there a registration deadline on that? Hmm, what? Is there a registration deadline on that? No, I'm sure there is. So. Because it says for newly elected. I'm sure they'll have city manager. I, I don't know. Oh, we'll they see. Might not like city manager. Yeah, they might not like me there. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Is that it? All righty. What? You're out of here. You're out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> All righty. So now we're going to go to comments from the members of the public. Any comments tonight? All righty. Thank you. Committee reports there are. Public hearing and action on 2518. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a professional service contracts for multi year asset management for the engineering, repair, and sustainability, water quality management, and maintenance. 
maintenance of the Scarf Road water storage tank owned, operated, and maintained by the City of New Carlisle Water Department. In other business, uh, Councilman, uh, sorry, Congressman Warren Davidson will hold his mobile office hours at the City Building on the fourth Tuesday of each month at 1.30 p.m. until 2 p.m. And I just stole your line, Mr. Turner. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just realized that. It's all right. Because I didn't know I was supposed to read it. <laughs> I will give it back to you on B. <laughs> okay. Appointment of Acting Clerk of Council, Howard Pitko. Council must appoint by majority vote. Is there a motion? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lindsay. I move that we appoint Mr. Pitko as the Acting Clerk of Council. The backup, I mean. Second. Mr. Riding. Mr. Mayor, I've got a question. When we had that meeting with Mrs. Bar 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 if I need to get something certified or signed or and sent to the board or the county or anything like that, he's able to sign. So it's good to have that backup in your office. And we're not additionally paying him. And we're not additionally paying him because Ms. Baber hasn't been trained at all. And plus, how that normally works is that how Howie would just sit in and you know manage the agenda, and then the minutes are still tied by the still talking about this unless she's out of town or something. Okay. But Mr. Cobb, Howie's a sunken cost. We're already paying him. I just asked a question. Well, that's fine. Very good question. Thank you. <coughs> she is a very nice lady, too. Mary Beth. Pardon. She was Mary Beth was a very nice lady. Uh, any other comments, questions, or concerns? All right. Yep. Mrs. Burner. <coughs> Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Mr. Lindsay? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Light? Yes. Passes six to zero. And then swearing in of mayor and vice mayor. You would do that? Yes, I would do that. Swearing in, it was at the, the direction of our law director that we had the swearing in, correct? And, and I would, I would sure. note that the charter does say that before the successor there, the successor is sworn in, so it does say that. Duties 
of the office of vice mayor and council member. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability.